Hey everyone, it's Game Fruit Pop. Welcome back to another CSGO video. Uh, today we're going to be going away from the montage stuff. Uh, that'll probably be coming back either next week or the week after. Uh, we're going to be talking about some issues today. I know, I'm sorry, issues are the worst. But uh, we're going to be talking about... I like using CSGO, I guess I should explain this first. I like using CSGO as the background for, for videos when I talk about issues because I think it's a pretty good game that's exciting enough for you guys to watch when you're watching, like, as I talk, if you want to watch a video. Um, but it's also not so crazy that you can't pay attention to what I'm doing, or what I'm saying while watching CSGO. So that's why I use that as a uh, as my background for that kind of stuff. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the issues over the past couple of weeks that have been going on with YouTube. I didn't want to talk about this, but th I thought this would sort of just come up and then go away, and YouTube would fix their mistakes, but they're not. So I figured I'll make a video uh, just sort of explaining it to you guys if you don't know what it is. So the biggest problem, well there's two main problems that YouTube has encountered over the past couple weeks. Um, the first one is their new slash not new policies on advertiser friendly content. And their second is the influx and the return of uh, fake copyright violation claims on videos. So first thing we're going to talk about today is the, the advertiser friendly guidelines of YouTube which are I'm laughing, but it's really kind of sad what they are. Um, so if you're not aware, YouTube started enforcing a couple of weeks ago um, advertiser-friendly guidelines. If you don't know how basic YouTube works, for you to make money on a video, you need to have advertise, like you need to monetize it, and basically you make money based on the amount of views that you get, uh, like that are, are advertiser views. So the amount of views you get where an advertisement plays on YouTube, and that's how you make money on YouTube if you're making it without having outside sponsors or stuff like that. So if YouTube ruled that your video was not advertiser friendly, there was no way of you making money, your video would be demonetized, and then it's really just sad times for you. Uh, so obviously there are some reasons why a video should be demonetized. If it's something hateful in nature, or if it's like a propaganda video for like ISIS. But I think that once you see, if you're not aware of the guidelines that YouTube has, once you know them, you're going to be a little bit understanding of why there's an issue with this and why bigger YouTubers are, are having an issue with this. So there's, I think, five guidelines. I'm going to put them up on screen right now. But there are five guidelines that YouTube um, basically passed. Some of them are reasonable. Some of them are, if, like, you can't have a video that's hateful in nature, stuff like that. Those are fine. Those make sense. The biggest one that I have an issue with is the fifth guideline. And that the guideline is that, I'm paraphrasing it because I don't have it in front of me, but it's basically that anything that is political in nature talks about political conflicts, um, international conflicts, anything like that, even if it doesn't have graphic images, is considered not advertiser friendly. So basically, YouTube has the ability to demonetize your video if you literally report the news, which is a problem. Um, obviously, they have the ability to choose if something stays up and doesn't stay up. And so, uh, you see YouTubers such as uh, news YouTuber, well, I'm not going to call them news YouTuber, that sounds terrible. Uh, YouTuber Philip DeFranco, he's a pretty popular YouTuber, he records the news, if you haven't checked him out, be sure to check him out, he's super, like, he's, he's really enjoyable, in my opinion, to watch. He literally just records, or just, like, reports the news, and as, as unbiased, as middle-of-the-road politically that he can. That's literally what he says. He, he has flat-out said that he tries to be as, as middle-of-the-road in his news as he can. And he's had videos, I think it was 12 videos taken down that, that YouTube viewed were not monetizable because they were not advertiser-friendly. You have other big YouTubers with uh, over a million subscribers that have almost all their videos taken down. And so obviously for the bigger YouTubers, the YouTubers that do this for a living, this is literally taking their their job away without telling them, without giving them any advance notice so they can prepare themselves. And, and so this is something that is concerning. And it's even more concerning because when, asked, when YouTube was asked about this, they said that this isn't a new guideline. This is just a guideline that they're changing the way they enforce. So... YouTube was enforcing this guideline and demonetizing videos without telling the YouTubers. So the YouTuber just was not making the money that they should have been making on their video. And so obviously that's that's really, really concerning for for bigger YouTubers, but even for the small YouTubers. Because for a small YouTuber, it's not necessarily about making money because you don't make enough money. But it's still it's still good to see your channel grow. And if your channel is growing, how your, how your monetization is growing as well and stuff like that. And it's just, it's really just a concern to me that the the ball is really in YouTube's court when they choose what to demonetize and what they don't. And so if you're looking at something like political narrative, like a, you can't monetize political events, uh, you could 
very easily just have YouTube demonetize videos of political views they don't, as a company, agree with, which brings YouTube to a very, very, in my opinion, dangerous place where if you if you're restricting the ability for somebody to a bigger youtuber who does this for a living to express their thoughts because they're worried that it's not going to be what youtube thinks as a company politically that's a place that i don't think we should strive to be as a website and so obviously that's something that i want youtube to get away from and so i guess i'll get my my last two cents on this i think that the first like three guidelines are okay and they can stay and the last two, I can't remember what the second last one is, but again, it'll be on screen while I, when I started talking about this. I don't know if it'll still be there, but it, it, the second guide, last guideline, the last one, are a little bit ridiculous, especially if like the the you can't report on political conflicts or international conflicts, even if you don't share any images that are violent in nature. That's that's a joke. That is literally you are not able to report the freaking news on YouTube. Otherwise, you cannot make money. And if that's what YouTube wants to be as a website, if they want to continue to just be cat videos, we want to go back to what it was like in 2005 when it was just cat videos and Fred, then YouTube can do that. But YouTube will lose its viewer base. The viewer base will go somewhere else because news reporting on YouTube, the stuff that's not kid friendly on YouTube has a place on the Internet. And that's what makes people money. And if YouTube is not smart enough to realize that advertisers would want to target that kind of stuff, then YouTube is really not the company that people think it is. Because if nobody is smart enough in the YouTube marketing department to go, hey, this video targets adults, this targets people who want to get informed on the news in an unbiased manner and can't find advertisers, then YouTube needs to seriously look at their personnel. Because that is a very, very marketable thing. You know exactly what type of people are going to be watching every video. If you can't find a target, a target advertiser for those demographics, then literally all the work is done before you have statistics that tell you what you need to target what kind of companies you should target for each video if you just want to have a broad blanket of let's advertise tonka toys on every single person's video then then that's an embarrassment in my opinion but that's only the first issue of youtube the past couple weeks happy times for everybody i guess uh the second issue is that we're having an influx or an increase in counterfeit copyright claims on on videos and as on live streams and YouTube has done a pretty good job of, of trying to restrict this uh, because this was an issue a while ago, maybe even a year ago. Uh, but it has returned, and it's it's more prevalent on live streams now. YouTube's live streaming service has been, uh, definitely been increasing in popularity lately, and um, you're having big YouTubers that are suddenly now being struck with counterfeit copyright claims in the middle of their live streams. Which I think, if uh, correctly, like I don't know if this is correct, but I'm pretty sure it just ends their live stream. And uh, obviously, this is a concern. This isn't as big of a concern for me because I don't live stream and I also don't really, like, I use music and for the most part my music is, is like, I, I'm, I know that it's going to be copyright free, like, I'm not going to copyright claims, but for the YouTubers that, that live stream, this is obviously a big concern for them because if they're trying to get more into the live stream, they're trying to be a good rival for Twitch, you can't have a YouTuber at risk of, of having his, his live stream not rightfully taken down in the middle of it, otherwise they'll just go somewhere else. So I think both of the issues really surround the same problem with YouTube, that they're having a serious issue making their website marketable to large YouTubers, to large creators. Because if you have a risk of, ultimately, large creators come here, they come to this website, this is their job, they come here to make money. If the large creators are not able to make money, they will go somewhere else where they will be able to make money. A lot of them have a big enough audience, if PewDiePie wanted to say, YouTube is a joke. Screw you. I'm leaving. I'm going to, to, I don't know. I can't think of another website. I'm going to, to uh, SoundCloud. Then a lot of his viewers will follow him. PewDiePie has 43 million subscribers. At least half of those people would be enough to live a pretty decent life. And I'm assuming half of them are active. Half of them would probably follow him. Even if not half, even if it's a smaller number, some enough will follow him that he will be able to bring that popularity to another website and just grow it there. So YouTube likes to think that they're the only outcome, like the only reasonable place for these creators to come. And if they keep going with that attitude, with these dangerous and reckless policies, then YouTube is going to just spell its own demise. And I'm not saying that YouTube is going to go bankrupt or YouTube is going to be a failure. YouTube will always be there, but YouTube's popularity will go away. YouTube's popularity, YouTube could be the MySpace of video sharing if they don't correct their correct their ways. So that's pretty much everything for this video. I just wanted to give you my opinions on the YouTube drama. Seems like every week we got YouTube drama now, but uh, if you're new to my channel and you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit that subscribe button. 
And if you are a returning subscriber, thank you for your continued support. And uh, if you enjoyed, be sure to hit that like button. And let me know in the comments what you think about the about what I've said. I, I honestly, I want to create conversations around this. I don't want to just talk to myself. So if you do have any opinions, be sure to leave them in the comments below. So thank you guys very much for watching. Hope you guys are having a good Monday, or whenever you watch this video, it's coming out on a Monday. Uh, my name is Game Through Pulp. This has been Counter Strike and some YouTube guidelines as well. Those are fun. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you all Wednesday. Have a good one.